I'm the biggest Spider-Man fan in the world. What do you think I'm gonna say? Man, the lighting's awful. I'm Eli, I'm from Ace and Casey, and welcome back to Eli's Corner. Quick little update on Ace and Casey, though. Sorry that there was no new video last week, but hey, I promised two weeks or sooner, so that means you should see one by this Saturday, or maybe not. You never know how life works. It's very unpredictable. But still, let's get on with the review, though. Spider-Man Homecoming. And it, 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 look, Spider-Man, it, it's great. It, it's awesome. It, what, do you, what else do you want me to say? What a fun ride this was. And now it's my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time, which means you should be expecting a high rating from me. First, let's talk about the good. Tom Holland is the perfect Spider-Man slash Peter Parker. When he's Peter Parker, he's that dorky loser. And then when he's Spider-Man, he's just, well, Spider-Man. Look at him. He looks like Spider-Man. He acts like Spider-Man. And this isn't just like one of those dark and gritty Spider-Man that The Amazing Spider-Man was trying to do. This is a fun and charming Spider-Man that I have been wanting on the big screen for a while. And when you see him being Spider-Man, you can tell that he's still getting used to being Spider-Man. Like, he doesn't know exactly what to say, how he should be positioned when he's gonna talk to a bad guy. He's just like, oh, so, what's up guys? Oh, and the suit, man. The, the suit looks great. I love it, so perfect Spider-Man. The supporting cast is great as well. You got Aunt May, who is a bit younger in this movie, but I'm kind of used to it by now. You got all of Peter's friends that he's talking to, his uh, de decathlon uh, team, and it consists of Liz, Flash Thompson, Flash Thompson! He is a realistic high school bully. He's not one of those big jocks that would just beat up Peter Parker. No, he's a straight up douche in this movie. And he's not popular. It's not, he's not the smartest. He's not the best. He's just a complete douche and he doesn't care. And I think my favorite supporting cast member in this entire movie is Ned, Peter's best friend. He acts like what a best friend would act like if he suddenly realized that his best friend is a superhero. He's always asking questions, he's asking, hey, can I be uh, the, the guy in the chair, you know, help you out? It, it, it's just, Ned is awesome. Also, Michael Keaton as the Vulture. One of the best MCU villains of all time. He's menacing, he's threatening, but also at the same time, this is the type of villain that you understand why he's doing what he's doing. And it just works so well. Oh, by the way, Iron Man's in this movie. I think he was. <laughs> uh, as many as the trailers led us to believe, like, is there is there too much Iron Man in this movie? Is he gonna take over? Is this Iron Man 4? Is this Iron Man Homecoming? No, it, surprisingly, Iron Man is not in this movie that much. He's only in, like, certain scenes. And really, it's he's kind of acting as, like, this mentor, this awkward mentor for Peter Parker, and he, you can tell it's a bit awkward for him because he's always going like, hey, um, look, I'm, I'm not really good at this because my dad was never good at this, but I feel like I should break the cycle. Um, you did pretty, you did pretty good, kid. Uh, yeah, just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Robert Downey Jr., perfect Iron Man. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but still, even when Iron Man is not used as much in this movie, it works. By the way, Happy's back! Yes! Going off of that, the action is pretty good. It's not over the top. Like, th this is actually a smaller superhero movie. It's not like the e the world's gonna end, like Avenger style, or basically every other Spider-Man movie that ever came out. No, this is more like a, hey, this is a smaller story. It's not gonna be, hey, we need to stop him from destroying the city. It's just more more of like your friendly neighborhood movie. Now, if there is something that I can say I didn't l like about the movie, and I know I'm going to sound hypocritical, I'm glad that they didn't go with another origin story. We see Uncle Ben die. We see the spider bite again. But they don't exactly say... They don't exactly reference back to it as much as I think they should have. I mean, back in Civil War, we kind of get a reference to why Peter does what he does. And in this movie, some people are like, why exactly is Peter Parker doing what he's doing? What is his motivation? Here's what I think it is. 
So Peter Parker has these abilities and these powers, and at first, yeah, he does want to help people, the little guy, and then Tony Stark picks him up, drops him off in Germany, and he's fighting along all these superheroes that he has admired for. And then he gets placed right back in the city, and now he realizes, man, I have these abilities and all these powers that I can use to help other people. Like, I can do stuff on a bigger scale, because he believes he has the ability to do so. And now he's just, you know, doing little things like helping the ladies cross the street or stuff like that. So, yeah, he's waiting for his chance and he wants to prove himself that he could be an Avenger. So I feel like that's kind of what drives him to do this. Not that, I mean, I'm sure he got the with great power comes great responsibility, but he's also wanting to prove himself to, you know, the bigger superheroes. Which, by the way, would it really kill them to say with great power comes great responsibility? Come on, you gotta say it! But still, this is more of a coming-of-age story. It's an origin of Spider-Man without exactly the origin of Spider-Man. And as a Spider-Man fan, it works for this Spider-Man. But I'm hoping, like, in the sequel, they will have more of a uh, with great power comes great responsibility lesson in it. But that's what I'm hoping for. But for this movie, I loved it. I'm, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, the biggest I've ever known, and this movie, I have to get 100%, absolutely loved it. It's fun, it's action-packed, and it just made me feel like a Spider-Man fan when I was a kid. So, yeah, I felt like a kid again watching this movie. I didn't watch this movie just to see, oh, okay, certain things need to be right. Uh, just, no, I was just having fun watching it. And that's what I love most about this movie. And that is why I am giving Spider-Man Homecoming a 10 out of 10 recommend. Man, superhero movies have just been top notch this year. I mean, we've had Logan, we've had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, now Spider-Man Homecoming. Wait, am I forgetting one? I feel like I'm forgetting something really important. I was supposed to review it a month ago. Is it woman related? Oops. Well, I mean, I'm sure that's not the only woman-related thing that I should be talking about it. Ah! Go to the outro.